Well, I successfully drove in Austria to the mountain biking place. Now let's see if I can drive to Germany to Mittenwald. Mittenwald is a Bavarian town just over the German border from Austria. It is nestled amid the beautiful towering alpine peaks and it's known for its colorful painted houses as well as its history of making violins. We're here to see the beautiful houses, see the colorful flowers, and maybe eat some ice cream. Here's a berg that towers over Mittenwald and then we have beautiful center of town. There are so many things to love about Mittenwald. I do love the painted houses, and I also love the abundance of magenta flowers, which embellish them in the many wooden flower boxes on those buildings. Actually, there were magenta flowers all over the town when we visited, but the most magenta thing I saw this day was this car. Perfectly matched my Mad as a Box of Frogs t-shirt. That's the houses from... 1485. Every building is so picturesque and gorgeous. I wish I could understand German because that looks like an interesting story. Here on the pretzel house. But unfortunately, the bakery is closed because it's too late in the afternoon. But I did find another bakery that was open, which was lucky because I felt the need to get a German pretzel in my one brief visit to Germany this year. I got this cheesy little pretzel and it was tasty. On our third try, we're finally getting ice cream at a legit Italian gelateria. We are enjoying our ice creams. Ian got lemon and raspberry, and I got a morena and then this special mittenwald ice that I thought I should try. It's a good way to see the town. They're all toasting each other with their beers in the back of the cart. This maid hole is decorated with Bavarian characters. It's very tall. This is obviously a very popular town with cyclists. We should have ridden our mountain bikes over here to Mittenwald. Everyone in this town is either a mountain biker or a hiker. I think we're the only people that <laughs> drove into this town. I visited with a cat in Austria earlier today, only about 10 minutes from here. Let's see if German cats are as disinterested in me as Austrian cats. Hey, kitty kitty. Oh, look, look how pretty you are. Look at those pretty stripes. My feline friend here would really like it if you would give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. Okay, actually, she doesn't care about that at all, but I really wish she would. <laughs> I was so captivated by all the things in this town. The signs on the businesses, the elaborate paintings and murals, and of course, I was anxious to go see inside this gorgeous church. The church tower says 1746 on it, but the original church here was from the 1400s. However, it was extensively refurbished in the Baroque style in the 1700s. The beautiful tower first caught my eye, but then I noticed this amazing sundial. It is so interesting. I've never seen anything quite like it. I'm a big fan of the Baroque architecture in churches. We saw many lovely examples in Austria and Luxembourg. This was the only one we saw in Germany, but it was also very pretty. The frescoes on the wall were stunning, and the crystal chandeliers were beautiful as well. But the ceiling was really spectacular. I don't know what this thing on the wall is. Is it the pulpit where the priest stands to give his sermon? Or is it a box seat for the most important member of the congregation? A lot of people can fit in this chapel because in addition to all the pews on the main floor, 
There are balconies above, up there by the pipe organ pipes. There are also other balcony seating areas on either side of the high altar. I don't know who sits here. Let me know in the comments if you know who is supposed to sit here. Here's the lectern and the very ornate high altar. The embellishments on the top were really extravagant, or over the top, you might say. I know some people think the Baroque decor is overdone, but I find it simply mesmerizing. To me, it almost looks like a theater. And I'm wondering if theaters were inspired by Baroque because many theaters have that sort of a little bit ostentatious design to them. It's very beautiful. It is a lot like a theater. Yeah, exactly, especially this thing over here. Looks like a special box seat for a prominent parishioner. Speaking of the parishioners, I was also fascinated by these name plates on the pews, indicating where the families were to sit, I guess. Many of them were printed in German Gothic handwriting, which was particularly unique. Every plaza is just lined with absolutely gorgeous buildings all painted so exquisitely. Places like this just look like cuckoo clocks. I think this painting was my favorite of all the buildings in Mittenwald. Just lovely. For hundreds of years, Mittenwald has been a significant hub for instrument craftsmanship, especially violin making. Matthias Klotz is considered the founder of the Mittenwald violin making tradition, beginning in the 17th century. In the 19th century, the Industrial Revolution brought changes to violin making, impacting traditional craftsmanship. However, Mittenwald continued to maintain its reputation for producing finely crafted instruments, adapting to new technologies while preserving the essence of its heritage. Today, Mittenwald remains a significant center for violin making, and this centuries-old tradition of master craftsmanship is a treasured part of the Mittenwald history that people in the town seek to preserve. When in Rome, you eat Roman food. When you're in Mittenwald, you eat Mittenwalder food. So I've already had Mittenwalder ice cream. Now it's time to have some Mittenwalder schnitzel. The place is called Der Kleine Kartoffelsack, which I think means potato sack. So I'm excited to get Kartoffelgratin, which I think means au gratin potatoes, which comes with my Mittenwalder schnitzel. Here's the mixed salad, which looks like it has corn and beets in it, so that looks really delicious. And then here is the Mittenwalder schnitzel, which is very different than I expected. So that's the kartoffel gratin, the cheesy au gratin potatoes. And then this schnitzel actually just looks like pork cutlets with the cheese and tomatoes on top. It's not all pounded and breaded and fried like they do in Vienna for Wiener schnitzel. So let's taste it. All right, I'm gonna get a little piece of the meat that has the tomato and the cheese in it. The pork is really good. It seems like it's brined or marinated or something. Okay, let's try the potatoes. Those potatoes are delicious. They're super, super creamy. Really, really good. Those are like the best cheesy potatoes I've ever had. Ian and I have each visited several German cities in the past, whether it was for vacations or business trips or whatever. But I can't say I've been to a prettier place than Mittenwald. If you're gonna to go to one place in Germany, I kind of highly recommend this. It's not a long trip, especially if you're coming from Austria, and it is so picturesque. 
I'm trying to compare it to like Rotenburg Ob de Tauber, which is also beautiful and picturesque, but super touristy and crowded. Maybe we lucked out because it's September 6th and it's not the middle of the summer here, but the crowds were not horrible. I hope you enjoyed our little tour of Mittenwald today. Next, I suggest you watch one of these videos of what we did earlier today. My attempt at riding mountain bikes in Austria and my first try at driving in Europe ever. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.